Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. 33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. Coming to you live from the uh, south coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, we are going to be uh, taking a... Uh, uh, a West Coast trip to go and talk to our good friend across Interstate 90 from Boston to Seattle. And we land there in Puget Sound, where we find our good friend, the Renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show, a great journalist, a great musician, and a uh, regular here every Friday on the Jeff Santos Show. Our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield joins us. How's it going, MTC? Well, it's going good. It was really windy earlier, so we had a trouble launching the boat. Uh, so we anchored for a while just so we could do the show. But I got a chance to go out on my body surfing boards, my boogie boards for a while. I'm practicing for the coast. And that felt good. It's it's warm in Seattle, but it's really windy. And it makes me think yesterday on Democracy Watch News, we had a couple people on from Seattle 350 talking about some of the challenges we face here environmentally as far as the Puget Sound and inland waterways and stuff. So it makes me think of that when I'm out on the Salish Sea. You know, the, the fact that we re- this is a very sacred body of water and we really need to protect it. And I'm glad to say that there have been some improvements in the inland waterways um, in terms of uh, reduced pollution, largely because of swales and things, because it tends to filter the water that run- runs off the urban environment. But um, I'm thinking about, you know, the tar sand oils that Pierre Trudeau thought was such a great, great idea when he had the Canadian government buy the Trans Mountain Pipeline and those increased oil tanker trips across Puget Sound, and, you know, I worry about the orcas and potential oil spills, because tar sand oil can't really be uh, cleaned up. It just sinks to the bottom. And, you know, I worry, Jeff, so we have a lot of work to do here in terms of trying to keep things uh, green, which is, you know, kind of, we are the evergreen state, so we want to keep things uh, nice and unpolluted, and uh, try to stay away from the fossil fuels as much as possible here. I mean, I'm using electric motors, because I, I actually don't like gas engines they're loud they smell bad they're noisy they chase off any of the wildlife you know the great blue heron isn't going to sit there and wait for you to pull up with your motorboat to look at it you know so best to have a kayak or an electric motor on your boat something where you can just or sails i mean you know appropriate technology right believe it or not people are starting to talk about maybe using sails for some cargo shipping again because it's just so environmentally friendly you know i mean really you you kind of become one with nature at that point when you're using the very forces of nature to propel your craft. Believe me, I, I do it, and it's a very uh, satisfying and meditative and peaceful and calm kind of experience. So, I highly, you know, I highly uh, recommend and promote appropriate technology, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be fossil fuels to get us around, folks. That's for sure. It definitely does. Talking to great Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. Mark, uh, you know, we've been dealing here uh, not only on the East Coast with the P-Town incident uh, in the uh, Lower Cape uh, of an outbreak, um, but uh, throughout the country, President Biden is... um, you know, urging people to wear a mask, urging people who haven't been vaccinated to get vaccinated. How has that affected Seattle? Um, are people t- paying attention uh, not only to what he's saying, but, you know, to local government officials? Presumably Jay Inslee is kind of, you know, uh, repeating a similar uh, mentality here. Are, are people wearing masks? You know, are you going to the clubs? Are people wearing masks inside? Well, first of all, let me mention Jay, Governor Jay Inslee, who ran for uh, the U.S president uh, on a green platform, uh, he has yet to come out really strongly against the Trans Mountain Pipeline and those Alberta tar sands that they want to strip through the future sound. So I'm waiting on you, uh, Governor Inslee, to come out and uh, stand for protecting the future sound. So you heard it here first, folks. He really needs to make a very strong public statement. Uh, I have a feeling he thinks that politically there's not much to do about it, but Man, if there's enough kayakivists out there, you know, uh, with their light shows and, you know, music and stuff, you know, show, showing their opposition. I know I was out on the Greenpeace ship, the Arctic Sunrise, with some uh, members of local Native American tribes, and they, you know, there's a big opposition to it. So I think politically, if he, if he realizes that there's a huge opposition, that he'll come out and publicly and speak. But here's the thing. As far as um, I'm concerned... Jeff, this is exactly what you just brought up. It is exactly why my band and the guys, the drummer and the bass player who've learned my song, been learning my songs, don't want to play out yet. And uh, so, yeah, we're we 
we're back to caution again. And as I said many times before, and we said in the press briefing yesterday for Democracy Watch News, it's always better in these cases to err on the side of caution. So, you know, just wear your mask and, you know, try to stay out of large crowds. I have not been hanging out in crowded rock clubs, and I don't know what the rock club owners and the bands are going to do about this because it's looking like you're going to have to wear a mask now from every show you go to. And you're probably going to have to show proof of vaccination and, or a negative test because that's just where we're headed back to, you know, unfortunately. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's really unfortunate. We're back to you know, I was, yeah. I was watching, uh, I think, uh, out of Chicago on one of the networks that uh, they had shown a lot of 20-somethings going to a Lollapalooza. Now, I, went, I went, you know, 25 years ago, whatever. It was a great time. Um, and, and, of course, this is pre-pandemic, so I wasn't thinking about wearing masks. But I remember the crowd, and the crowd was right on top of each other. And I know that they are going to, which I think is a smart thing, they are going to ask for vaccinations. Now, I don't know whether you've been vaccinated or not. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember going in when I was 18 and trying to be 21 to get into the bars and all that kind of stuff. It just seems to me that, you know, if somebody is is going to show you a vaccination card, who is going to be checking that at the door? Uh, or at the beginning of a, of a rock show, um, you know, are, are they going to be asking for a, a, uh, an ID as well? I, I'm just wondering about how this is all going to take place. Um, your thoughts? Well, the only, um, you know, I would say, I hope you can hear me. I, uh, I'm trying to negotiate here in this windy weather, but uh, there, you know, it's pretty obvious that there's going to have to be some direction coming out of the governor's office again soon in Washington state because the club, the music venue, uh, managers and owners, the restaurant and bar owners, they need some kind of direction about what, what the restrictions are going to be. I hope we don't have to go into any kind of a lockdown situation again. So far, it's not that bad. Uh, but I would expect the, the original show box, um, that's, and, and that, you know, the place we've been trying to save here for years from demolition from the wrecking ball by greedy real estate developers who want to put up a luxury condo there. Um, but that uh, establishment has made it very clear, and they were right, way out ahead of everyone else saying that they wanted to test, they wanted a positive or a negative test result within the, I think, last 48 hours or something, or, the, or a um, proof of vaccination Otherwise, you were going to be forced to wear a mask and be put in sort of the back section. Now that the governor and the CDC is telling people to wear masks again indoors, everyone is going to be wearing a mask, including the bands. So that's where we're at. Yeah, well, I mean, that's going to be very hard. Uh, again, we're having uh, Mark is outside, so we're having a lot of problems with his uh, phone. I will try to rectify that. I don't know if, if you can get to a place that's a little less windy, but uh, we're, we're having... Yeah, I can uh, do that. Okay, that'd be great. I think one of the other parts of, of the puzzle here, too, folks, is that uh, for so many Americans, um, you know, they, they do, as, as Joe Sandberg and, and uh, RBK was pointing out earlier, you know, they want to get out, they want to enjoy themselves, and there's, you know, the great open air and so on. But if, if you're going to do it in a way in which it's, you know, you're not wearing an, an N95 mask, you're not you're not protecting yourself, then you're, you're a risk to society, and we need to kind of get away from that. I, I guess you're in the water now. I can hear the splash going on um, yeah I'm getting up on the shore actually we we just um, pulled up uh, ah, I see sure okay. so I'm, I'm finding a, a windbreak here that's always the, the challenge ah here we go it's always the challenge is when you're out on the water uh, on the sailor sea is finding a windbreak when the winds come up like that they're very unpredictable so you don't know I mean it may be completely calm for the next hour and then maybe for 10 minutes it'll get really windy and then get very calm again this there's a convergence zone uh, around this part of the Puget Sound uh, where the weather is a bit unpredictable and it's, very, it's a little bit erratic in comparison to other areas. But uh, people are enjoying themselves. You know, they're laying in the sun and some people got out of work early. That's typical for Seattle, to, for people to have flex time and be able to head down to the, to the water. I like the idea that where I live, people literally go down to the water and sometimes kayak on their lunch hour which is pretty cool. You bring your own lunch 
or a box lunch at or there's all sorts of food trucks all over the neighborhood that cater to, you know, the Amazon and the Googleites, the Amazonians and the Googleites, as we call them. Um, <laughs> the Googleites. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're everywhere. Proud. Um, well, let me let me ask you this, uh, Mark. Uh, you got a mayor's race, as uh, we do here in Boston, coming up, and um, there are a lot of people uh, looking around. Uh, you know what's going on there in Seattle. Uh, it's kind of a measuring stick on the progressive side. What is the latest? Well, the field has narrowed a bit, as I as I reported last week. Um, but the big news was Pramila Jayapal's endorsement of uh, Lorena Gonzalez, who's the current council president and that's going to be a very very significant push um, in, the, in the direction of Lorena Gonzalez as our next mayor only because of the potential you know, money that's going to come in now because of that major endorsement um, I'm assuming that that means that you know, even though it's a nonpartisan race that the Democratic Party will also probably support her so there you go I am still a little bit more interested in what Colleen Echohawk has to say because uh, I think that she has more of a, a more comprehensive plan when it comes to dealing with homelessness. Uh, here's my attitude, Jeff, uh, just bottom line. Marina Gonzalez has been the council president for the last couple of years, and I haven't seen the homeless problem reduce. I also have seen, I've seen an 18% uh, budget cut in the police department, which I think is the, is the right thing to do because, you know, you had... You know, the average salary was like $150,000 a year on the Seattle Police Department. So, I mean, I think they had some fat that, that they could trim there. But in terms of uh, solving the issues that have really uh, affected people here, and especially the poor and working class, and that would include the skyrocketing rents. Jeff, a friend of mine, just got uh, re- is, is ready to re- renew her lease for another year. They raised her rent by $600, and that's just typical. Uh, apparently, according to Shama Sawan, our, our city council member, um, landlords have raised rent over 20% just within the last couple of months. So regardless of the pandemic and the economic, economic down slow, or slowdown and the, um, uh, the eviction moratorium, both nationally and here locally in Seattle, ours is going to last till September, by the way. I know uh, the national, the federal uh, eviction moratorium is ended today, I believe. Um, by the way, Ilhan Omar is out there pushing a guaranteed basic income bill, $1,200 a month for every American, up to $79,000 uh, income per year. So there you go. I mean, there's a very progressive cause that people have been talking about. There's a model program happening in Tacoma, Washington, where they are giving some families a basic income every month just to see if they can help reduce poverty, and that is the goal. But don't listen to the propaganda coming from the other side, because a lot of the wealthy elites and their political puppets in you know, Congress have said, oh, well, you know, giving people handouts makes them poor. And I have yet to be able to wrap my mind. Oh, they've been going for 40 years. You know, they, they, it, it's the greed, it's the selfishness of people, you know, who, uh, who think in that way. And they only care about them. If you, if you give somebody a helping hand, you think you're giving them a, uh, you know, a, a free... Uh, uh, yes, it's communism. Yes. They call it communism. <laughs> well, they describe yes, it as socialism and they equate that with communism. They just they say it's right. socialism, but they yeah, equate they can't that with communism. It, so, so they do it that way. They're living in the the Cold War era, about 1958. You know, they'll, they'll catch up someday. I don't know. Someday, I keep saying we're going to enter the 21st century in this country. I'm just not sure when yet. <laughs> yeah, good point. So, uh, what is what is the uh, excitement now of the Seattle Kraken? Uh, you got a new hockey team. Oh, wow. uh, they they picked up some new players. Uh, over the uh, Eberle the other day uh, from the Islanders, a good player and uh, a couple of defensemen. You got one former Bruin in Lausanne. Uh, so, uh, what what is the feeling around town? Uh, they get a they get a winter sports uh, league now with the Sonics gone a few years back. Yeah, I mean, I think you know. Luckily, the league sees fit, you know, to help out these expansion teams and give them some good um, some good players. So that worked out well for us. Um, I'll just tell you this. I live about three blocks from the local, one of the local Kraken stores. So um, it's, it's basically a neighborhood thing for us here. And also, uh, I, I see the merchandise everywhere now. Even at the local 
Bartel's drugstore chain, which is a locally owned chain. Wow. Well, actually, they just got bought out by Rite Aid, but they've been a locally owned chain for no, you know, brother. since the 1890s or yeah, something. Yeah, for a long time. And they, yeah, and they are um, high, featuring Kraken gear. So it's a very local kind of thing. I mean, people are, are into it because it's local. They're like, this is our team. We're going to support them. So I think you'll see some uh, a lot of ticket sales. You'll see a lot of excitement down there at the Key Arena. Um, and, you know, we'll see how they, the NHL deals with, you know, the COVID restrictions. That's my only worry. But other than that, I think, yeah, you know, there's a lot of support for sure. here for the team. And don't forget the Seawolves, too, our rugby team. Everybody keeps forgetting about them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have to keep mentioning I've, them because I've, of I've, the underdogs, you know. Yeah, I've been to one rugby match in my life. Uh, but, okay. Uh, uh, have you been well, watching you know, the what Olympics, is... by the way? Have you been watching the No, Olympics? I haven't. How do you... I, 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 I yeah, haven't watched it. I, uh, I, I feel same. like, in a lot of ways... Yeah, I, I worry about the fact that they shouldn't be having it in Tokyo with with what has happened with, uh, yeah, with COVID nineteen. Yeah, eighty percent of the Japanese public is doesn't want it. Yeah, right. So I, I I'm, I'm having a hard time thinking that you know I, I got to spend some time watching this. The and the other thing too is that uh, Miss uh, Biles has been crucified by right wing lunatics uh, on radio. Uh, you know, calling her weak and a psychopath and wanted to do the best for the country, best for her teams, and, uh, you know, and left the, uh, the the gymnastics because of that. Um, you know, I, I just... And Richard be a better got uh, banned. Yeah. There was also... What, Richard got banned for a use of marijuana, testing positive. So, yeah, there's a lot of controversy. Uh, major protests in Tokyo against the games. So I've watched a few of the gymnastic... Um, Matches. I've, I've, I've watched a few things here and there. A little bit of the of the uh, football is what they would call it in the rest of the world, but soccer. But yeah, it doesn't feel the same. It just feels kind of empty. The, the stands are mostly empty. Uh, it's nice that the United States is winning some gold medals, mostly women, which is cool. Um, but you know, yeah, it's not quite the same. I, I've been watching it on NBC, and I just get kind of bored after a while. <laughs> you should watch a really good movie from from the '80s or something. You know, it's like. There's a lot of good um, films out there um, that, you know, are available that uh, I would rather watch, I think, than most of the Olympics at this point. But, you know, we'll see. I was just cool um, with the idea of collecting the, the Hot Wheels, the Tokyo 2020 Hot Wheels cars, because, you know, I used to collect those as a kid, and then I gave them all to my brother oh, yeah. when I got too old for that kind of stuff. But I bought some because I figured, man, this may not even happen, so these would be collector's items, so they probably will be anyway. You know, because this was a weird Olympics. They're calling it the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And my um, poor, you know, yeah. niece, so she's so confused. She's a little, she's a child. She's like, 2020, I don't understand. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is 2021, I'm confused. What year is it? I'm like, yeah, they shouldn't be calling it the 2020 Tokyo Olympics anyway. This is 2021. Hello. Exactly. They exactly. got to delay it for a year. It happens, you know. It happened during uh, the war. It happened during a pandemic. You know. Well, you know, they they didn't have the 1981 because you know, they, or maybe they did, and mm-hmm. they, the American boy, boycotted most of it. But you know, I mean, they just could have done it. Yeah, Carter way, got you know. blamed for all that. Yeah, exactly. the right wing blamed Carter for that. You know. Right. He ruined America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's typical right wing. Uh, Mark, before we before we let you go, um, the one other thing that I think is happening here, and again we think of Seattle, unfortunately in this regard, is the uh, evictions that are coming up. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people are concerned they're not getting enough done in the legislature and Congress. Uh, do, do you have any any hope that the people in Seattle will have some protection? We do until September. After that, it's anybody's guess. The real estate industry here is very powerful. Um, not, during non-pandemic times, they control what happens. There is no rent control, although Shama Sawad has called for a major gathering, community gathering in September to start talking about that. There's a state prohibition on rent control because of our state legislature, but she's saying that there are ways of dealing with this um, you know, something like giving people six months' notice before you raise their rent, things like that. That get, at least gives people a chance to try to to re- relocate. Um, there's also this issue that we didn't talk about. What we can do in the future is the the student debt problem. Because Pramila Jayapal yesterday was talking about she had these incredible statistics: uh, over a trillion dollars in student debt in the United States, and 40 percent of the people who owe student debt do not have a college degree, and that's over 50% amongst the black population. So 
there are some major economic problems in this country we got to deal with. People have got to figure it out. Is it going to be unregulated capitalism and libertarian, you know, winner-take-all outlaw frontier-style <laughs> economics? Or are we going to start taking care of people? The rest of the world are watching us, and they're not impressed right now. So I just have to say that as a, a journalist that deals with the international press. Like, they're just looking at us and saying, what is wrong with your country? You guys are the richest country in the world. You have this huge military empire, and you just can't get your domestic situation together to help people survive. I mean, we go back to FDR to find an administration that actually cared about what happened to the population of this country. Ever since then, it's just been, you know, two corporate parties battling over the slices of the pie, and I'm tired of it. I'm getting out of well, that, We Joe. went to about 1965, um, you know, we assassinated, they assassinated Kennedy, uh, Johnson had a couple of good years, and uh, Vietnam took over, and we've been on a... We've been on a, uh, a road to, to, uh, to nowhere since, our road to hell since, uh, and that's, that's the case. Um, Mark, uh, I, I must tell you, we are at a, we're at a point right now where not only we're coming to the end of the show, but uh, I'm hearing more of the water than I am of you, so uh, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have to get you to a, a different location uh, next week. Um, but before you go, uh, do you sense there is um, any kind of, uh, um, you know, news coming from uh, the uh, the Jayapal world? Because she's got her hands in everything in the progressive uh, community. I think that right now she's going to take on student debt because that statistic is just mind-blowing that there's such a huge, I mean, over, what is that? I think she said $1.7 trillion in student debt in this country. That's a major economic um, albatross around our neck. And I would just advise, and I know she would advise Joe Biden to support forgiving all student debt. We need to start over again. Just erase the slate, start over, um, give people free college education so that we can compete in the world in terms of technology and the advancements of science. Um, let's do it. I mean, I'm ready. We're ready in Seattle. I don't know about the rest of the country, but I say let's go back to the California uh, uh, idea of free educate, free college education for everyone. A fun yeah, right. round did it from the 50s and 60s. Hey, uh, have yourself a uh, fantastic weekend, uh, Mark. We always appreciate it, my friend. We'll uh, look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks, Jeff. You guys have a great weekend. Keep on rocking, and check out my music and journalism at YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and all that. You guys rock. Best talk show in the United States. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, man. And I want to thank Ron Carter for producing this broadcast. Uh, thank you, folks, for uh, continuing to be uh, a great part of the program. Uh, keep on fighting peacefully. Right now, I wish you a happy weekend, and I tell you to... Be safe wherever you are. My name is Jeff Santos, and it is my time to say I...